morning, we will study the book of Proverbs chapter 30. It is written by a man named Agur who calls himself stupid. But I believe he has wisdom in the words that he wrote. And so this morning, we take a look at how uh, Agur has words of wisdom for us. You see, one of my favorite apps to go on is Masterclass. And I, I believe Masterclass is very cool and very interesting for me because I get to learn from people who are experts in their field. Not only just experts in their field, but they reach the pinnacle of their profession. You see, that there's an old adage that says, if you can't do, teach. But these people, they're teaching because they have done. And so it is always nice that we can, t we can learn from people, not just based on their experience, but because of their skill. So I learned how to play chess from Gary Kasparov. I learned how to negotiate from Chris Voss. And I learned writing from James Patterson. And so learning from people, not based on experience, but because of skill, gives us better understanding and better trust into the words of those that are teaching because we can trust what they are saying because they've used it to gain success. But Proverbs 30 is a masterclass on faith from the words of a man who may not have experienced it, but he wrote it down. And he claims he has no understanding, no, not a good human understanding in his life. But he shows several things that confound him and things he found interesting. He uses the, the pattern three things and four, four different times in the chapter. But he lists four things five times. And, and, and this, this fifth time that he lists the four things was before his final three and four. See, these four things are found in verse 24 to 28. So in the other times that he lists four different items, he goes, there are three things that, blah, that I found this and this and this, and there's a fourth that, that's that, 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 that. But in verses 24 to 28, he just says there are four things that confound me. And so he, he breaks the pattern of three and four. And so I wanted to see what this is. Why did he break the pattern? And I, I believe there's something that we can learn from this. You see, he lists four animals that confound him, right? Ants are creatures of little strength. Yet, they store up food in the summer. And the beauty of the ant is they work together for a singular goal. There is wisdom for us to learn from the ant who accomplishes because their ego doesn't distract them from their goals. The hyrax, second thing, are small rodents. And they, it's very hard for them to protect themselves. They've decided to live in a hard place to live. And these hyraxes have the wisdom to realize if we can't protect ourselves, we have to live somewhere that can protect us. And so they live amidst the rocks that can provide them safety and can provide them natural fortifications. And then the locusts, you know, the locusts are interesting because they are like God's army. The locusts go together like an army marching to as one they, they 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 go together marching as one but they have no visible leader they are a united front without a leader you see they observe the order amongst themselves no one is out of line no one is out of place they go in one line as if they know what to do on their own as a team and the fourth is it in some places, in some versions, it's the spider. In some versions, it's the lizard. But both animals can be found anywhere. Though they, they are common 
common animals, right? And we can catch them, we can, we can see them. Sometimes they're in our house. I may have one here right now, but despite all of that, they also are living in king's palaces. See, it, what's interesting in, in those houses that of the elite of the elite, of that one percenter, they have people whose main job is to get rid of these pests, and yet they still persevere, they still live. And each of these four things represent, these four animals represent a lesson for us, right? The first, the first lesson I want you guys to understand is we shouldn't admire just on outward appearance, like bulk, like beauty, like strength, like height, weight, you know? Sometimes we get to, we, we, we think about, oh, if a person looks like this, they're not good for us. If a person is a little bit too overweight, you know, we, we judge them. If, if they act a certain type of way, we judge them. If, if they're not as beautiful as we want them to be, we judge them. If they're not as strong, if a man is not strong, we judge that person. But we shouldn't do that. The second is that the wisdom comes from God, our creator. And he has given that wisdom in all creation, all of his creation. From an ant to a hyrax to an elephant to you and to me. Wisdom have been given by God. And we must use our wisdom and common sense. The third is we must take responsibility for our actions the way creatures in the wild have done. Fourth, do not underestimate the weak things of the world and those that are beneath you. You see, Agur may have thought himself to be more stupid than any man. He said it himself in verse 2 of the NASB. But his words carried wisdom for us today. I hope this Sabbath day you may look to people that you have overlooked previously and believe that God has given them wisdom and for you to not underestimate those around you and not to look as if they are beneath you on this Sabbath day. God bless you.